Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is James and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema. Well, today I wanted to spend a few minutes with you sharing with you my thoughts on a recent release from the Criterion Collection that I picked up as part of the Target buy two, get one sale. So Target had a buy two, get one sale. I think it ended on the 18th. And this is a sale where I picked up three Criterion titles. So I decided to go ahead and get a jump on the July Barnes and Noble Amazon sale next month, fingers crossed. So I decided to get a jump on that sale and go ahead and pick up three titles. I've got several more to pick up next month, but I decided to go ahead and get my feet wet and take advantage of that Target sale. So I picked up three titles. I got two of them the other day and I watched this one already, Chan is Missing. So I wanna spend a few minutes with you sharing with you my thoughts on this edition from the Criterion Collection. It's a 1982 film from director Wayne Wong, comes in at spine number 1124 in the Criterion Collection. And this is a very fascinating, fascinating edition. You know, as you begin to think about, or as you think about what titles to pick up as part of the Criterion Collection sale, this is a title I definitely wanna put on your radar as a title that I sort of had in the background of titles that I was thinking, maybe I'll pick it up, maybe I won't pick it up. This title came out on May the 31st, the same day as Double Indemnity 4K. So Double Indemnity 4K pretty much had all my attention and this one just sort of went into the background of my mind. And I'm glad that it came a little bit more to the forefront of my consciousness and I went ahead and picked it up because I really enjoyed this edition. So this is an edition I can definitely recommend in. I'll just say that right up front. And I can say that because it's one of those examples of many examples of Criterion Collection editions that I just buy as a blind buy and I'm just blown away. I learned something new about the world. I learned something new about history. I'm sort of opened up to something that I had not even thought about before. And this is an example of that in terms of some of the history that you learn watching this film. So let me read the back of the Criterion case to give you a feel for what this title is about. It says, Chan is missing a mystery man, a murder and a wad of missing cash. In his wryly offbeat breakthrough, Wayne Wong updates the ingredients of classic film noir for the streets of San Francisco's Chinatown circa 1980. When their business partner disappears with the money they had planned to use for a cab license, driver Joe Wood Moy and his nephew Steve Mark Hayashi scour the city's back alleys, waterfronts, and Chinese restaurants to track him down. But what begins as a search for a missing man gradually turns into a far deeper and more elusive investigation into the complexities and contradictions of Chinese American identity. The first feature by an Asian American filmmaker to play widely and get mainstream critical appreciation, Chan is Missing is a continuously fresh and surprising landmark of indie invention that playfully flips decades of cinematic stereotypes on their heads. So that's a great summation of what this film's about. This is a very fascinating film to watch. This film was shot on location in Chinatown, San Francisco, USA in 1981, 1982. It's shot on 16 millimeter and it's shot in black and white. And it is a very fascinating film to watch and to just take in the action. Of course, you know, Joe and Steve, they give their money to this man named Chan, this mysterious man who we don't ever see. And he takes that money and who knows what happens? He just disappears, he goes missing and they go looking for him. And as they go through the different streets and the different areas of Chinatown in San Francisco looking for him, we are introduced to all these amazing, interesting, rich, and deep characters along the way that gives us a glimpse into Chinese culture and just the struggles that people have that many, that many Chinese immigrants at that time had with Chinese American identity and just all the issues that go along with that. So I just found it very fascinating just, just taking in the different characters along the way and just hearing their perspectives and the way that they looked at life and the way they looked at things. Um, an example of that is one man they ran into talked about, you know, if you're coming, if you're an immigrant coming to this country, do you bring the entirety of your culture with you and just, just maintain 100% trueness to that culture? Or do you fully assimilate to American culture? Or do you do something in between? Those are some of the struggles and the tug of war that many people encountered 
you know, during that time. And that's just one example of the types of things that people talked about, you know, in this film in terms of the struggles with identity as an immigrant in this country and sort of where they belong. And as you, as you go through the special features, it's very interesting hearing from Wayne Wong talk about the struggles of identity that he is a filmmaker, that he felt. You know, he's from Hong Kong. He spent a lot of time in the United States, went back and forth. He, he talks about his background of his father sending him here to the United States to escape some of the unrest that was going on in Hong Kong in the 1960s. And so you learn a lot about Wayne Wong's background in addition to everything you learn in the film about, you know, the issues that many Chinese immigrants dealt with. You learn a little bit about some of the issues inherent with the struggle between the People's Republic of China, mainland China, and then the Republic of China or Taiwan, that whole complex political issue that still has resonance to this day. And so this is the type of title that I was blown away by. And I can highly recommend if you're interested in history and just learning a little bit more about the world and learning a lot about the filmmaker, this is definitely a title to consider picking up as part of the upcoming Barnes & Noble sale. Now, Wayne Wong is a very interesting character. You know, in going through the supplements, there are a number of interviews where he's being interviewed by different people. There's a couple of conversations on here where he's being interviewed by critic Hua Su and filmmaker Ang Lee, which is very interesting. Ang Lee's the director of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, so they have a great conversation. And then there's a conversation between Wang and film programmer and critic Dennis Lim. And all of these conversations are incredibly fascinating because Wayne Wong is a trip. Wayne Wong is so funny to listen to, you know, in terms of his his own, the way he talks about his own background, he's a little self-deprecating and he's just incredibly funny to listen to. And I was genuinely surprised, you know, by that. He's funny and entertaining to listen to and he's talking about his background and the challenges and almost sort of making a joke out of it, you know? And I, I really appreciated that, you know, going through those conversations. You also get a documentary, Is Chan Missing? Which is a making of documentary directed by Debbie Lum. That's also very interesting. So you don't get a ton of features in this release, but those interviews that feature Wayne Wong tell you a whole lot about the filmmaker. Of course, Wayne Wong is the same filmmaker who made, who directed Made in Manhattan 20 years later, that stars Jennifer Lopez and Ralph Fiennes. I never knew that till I watched this film. Wayne Wong directed this film 20 years later, but 20 years prior to that, he created this groundbreaking film that I just highly recommend. It is very fascinating. If you're interested in history, if you're interested in films like this that just give you a glimpse of different perspectives and different cultures, I definitely recommend Chan is Missing. Now, in terms of the picture quality, this is shot on 16 millimeter. It's a black and white film. And overall, I mean, I thought the picture quality looked pretty solid. It On the back here, it says this is a high definition digital transfer approved by director Wayne Wong. And it has an uncompressed monoral soundtrack. So it's a high definition digital transfer. It's not a 2K or 4K digital restoration. So I don't think this is a new mastering that was done for this, but it's still a pretty nice looking image on this Blu-ray. There's a lot of nice detail in this image. There's some pretty decent contrast. You can tell that, that this film would probably benefit from a nice 2K or 4K you know, digital restoration. I think it would look a little bit better on this Blu-ray than what we have here, but I think overall the picture quality is pretty solid. And I think most people will be pleased with it. And quite frankly, I think just given the sort of the verite style of this film, I think that the picture that's on display kind of works just given the type of film that this is. It's a verite type documentary, you know, type style filmmaking. And so I think just given the way that this film was shot, the way that this film looks on this Blu-ray disc works for me very well. And as far as the audio, the audio was fine. I could hear everyone very well. I think I can hear all the dialogue pretty clearly. So overall, very solid on the dialogue. Now on the inside of this case here, you'll see the disc, which I think has some pretty cool, pretty, pretty cool art. You'll see uh, Joe, Wood Moy's character. You'll see a car, his taxi, which is pretty cool. So I like the art on the disc. And you also get this fold out here, 
which I'll show you. But let me pop this disc out. And you can see the pictures here on the inside of the case, which I think are really, really cool. Of course, you see the outside here, which I love. I love this actual artwork, this nice collage of images over, this, over the head of this man, Joe. Very, very nice. Including, of course, his car right here, his taxi car. So thought that was super cool. And of course you get Joe and Steve here on the streets of Chinatown. Just a nice collage of images. Golden Dragon, the restaurants. So cool, so cool. And on the inside here, you get this nice essay from Oliver Wang, Lost and Not Found in Chinatown, which is a nice essay that talks about the history and the making of this film. So good, so good. So overall, this is a really nice discovery for me. This is one of those, one of those discoveries that I really appreciate about the Criterion Collection. This is a edition that I would rank pretty much up there with other similar editions that I learned so much more about a new filmmaker that I wasn't familiar with. Editions like these two right here. Boat People from An Hui, director An Hui. And this, a film from, from Hungarian director Marta Mezeros, Adoption. So both of these editions here are also highly, highly recommended. If you're looking for other Criterion Collection recommendations and you want to learn something new about a filmmaker you may not have heard of before or been exposed to before, these two were great discoveries for me that came out earlier this year. These are spine numbers 1113 and 1115 in the Criterion Collection. Great, great editions. In fact, these two editions are among my favorite Criterion Collection editions of the year so far. So highly recommended. This film from Anne Hui and Martin Mezeros, two fantastic directors. This film here from Wayne Wong, Chan is Missing, joins that list of films that are great new discoveries for me from a director that I had never heard of and a film that just opens up my eyes to aspects of the world that I you know, before didn't know much about. So definitely can appreciate Chan is Missing. So overall, I think the film is fascinating. I think it looks really nice on high definition given the source and the type of film that it is and the way that it was shot. I think it definitely works. Nice black and white photography. And of course it sounds fine. And the special features are a little bit light, but those interviews with Wayne Wong are incredibly entertaining. I mean, they're informative. He talks a lot about his background. Of course, you know, you'll hear him talking about him uh, being a part of when he came to the United States, coming from Hong Kong, that he got into a Quaker family. He went through a hippie phase and, you know, he got interested in art and his dad withdrew his tuition uh, because he wanted to go into painting. And then he had this interesting road that eventually took him from art and painting to directing films. And he started off in TV, got fired from that. He just had a, a very interesting road to get to being a director. And it's very entertaining hearing him describe it. So I highly, highly recommend it. It's just, Fantastic. Another thing I really liked about this film is just how authentic the representation of Chinatown is, is in this film. I mean, you get to see the people. And that's another very interesting part of this film is that the two leads who are uh, Wood Moy, who plays Joe, and Mark Hayashi, who plays Steve, they're the only real actors in this film. The rest of the people in this film are real people. They're not actors, they're just real people playing themselves. And that gave a lot of, of, of authenticity to this film. You also have an interesting reference to Dianne Feinstein. Of course, we all know Senator Dianne Feinstein today, who's a current sitting U.S. Senator. At this time, 40 years ago, in, 19, in the early 1980s, she was the mayor of San Francisco. And so there is an incident that is referenced in this film, and there's references to Dianne Feinstein at the time that she was a mayor in San Francisco at that time. So I think that was interesting. There is a little bit of a mystery in this film there's uh, that involves Chan, that Joe becomes paranoid that Chan may be involved in the death of a man killed during a flag waving incident 
between opposing supporters of the People's Republic of China, mainland China, and the Republic of China, Taiwan. So there's that aspect of the quest for Chan. Is he involved in this murder? So I found that fascinating. But yeah, this is just a very, very fascinating film. This film was shot, of course, in black and white, shot on the streets of, streets of Chinatown. And they shot this film on weekends. So they had this pick specific time to shoot this film. They shot it on weekends and it was it was shot documentary style and verite style. And you get realness and authenticity watching this film in the final result they came up with. So very happy to have seen this film. It is highly, highly recommended. It comes in at just only 75 minutes. So it's a very quick watch. And so this is the kind of film that you can just, you know, pop in the player and just over an hour you're done. I actually went through this film twice. That's how short the runtime is. You can go through it twice pretty quickly and just absorb it even more. But overall, this is highly, highly recommended for the upcoming Criterion Collection sale. But let me know in the comments below if you've seen Chan is Missing. If you have, let me know what you think about it. Let me know what other films you've also seen from this director, Wayne Wong. Have you seen Made in Manhattan? If so, what do you think of this film? What are some other films from Wayne Wong that you have seen? And let me know what other titles from Criterion you are thinking of picking up for this upcoming Barnes & Noble sale. Let me know that in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you next time at the movies. Peace.